In this episode of the podcast, I'm sitting down with veteran podcaster and turns out to be software developer, Mr. Martin Bailey. We're going to be talking about his new app, Photo Clock Pro. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson. You know, every now and then I get to have one of my heroes on the podcast. And Martin Bailey, even though he will never admit it, is one of those people. He has been, if, if you can believe it, podcasting longer than I have, right? He's one of my influences in podcasting and photography and all the things. And now he's turned, I guess, what side of the brain is it? Left brain, right brain, whatever the programmatic <laughs> The analytical side of the brain is he's aimed that at coding and come up with a new piece of software that he calls Photo Clock Pro. Martin Bailey, welcome to This Week in Photo, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. How are you doing? It's an absolute pleasure to be back, Frederick. It's lovely to see you again, and um, I, I'm looking forward to, to diving in and talking about my new app. Yeah, yeah. Before we do that, I want to make the bulk of this just you sharing and explaining what the app does and all that. Mm. But before we do that, the... the how are you a photographer and an artist and a coder? How does that even work? Is that even legal? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my, my love of photography started in my teens. And I, when I came to Japan, I was 24 years old. And I was sort of immersed in a culture that was very, ca a lot of cameras here. But, you know, the, a lot of the cameras that we all love and use are made here. And that sort of fueled my, my passion more and then computers came along. So like from 90, 92, 93, I bought my first computer and started using that. And the photography was already there as a base, and it just sort of all merged together. And then digital came along and mm -hmm. merged them either, even closer. And so to me, it was, it was all part of the same thing. And I, I, went, I actually went my, my job I was doing for the first four years or so here in Japan, when that went away, I went to college over here and learned computers and multimedia. And um, I've got an I've got an exam showing that I'm proficient in Photoshop two or three or something like wow. that. Um, <laughs> okay. And so I was I was doing all of this stuff. It to me, it's all part of the same thing. And I was learning computer science. I never actually taught was taught coding more than HTML and web pages. But over the years, I my love for both photography and the technical side and computers just all helped me to, I, I dive in and learn more and more languages. Like yesterday, I have a, a plugin for Adobe Photoshop out as well. And someone reported a problem. So I'm switching from Apple's uh, Swift UI code into JavaScript and, and I'll go, wow. I'll go into the website and I'll, I'll do something on the background and I'm coding in PHP. And it's just like over the years, I've taught myself to do little bits of this and that. And it's all helping me to, to, you know, basically to ride the COVID storm because I, yeah. some of these things that I'm putting out are helping to, they're becoming passive income. And, you know, I, I had, I had a, an app in the app store for many years already. Um, but all of these things bring in a few hundred dollars here and there, and it, it's helping to keep a roof it over our head. It yeah. adds up, yeah. That, that's amazing that you can do that because I know you you run these wildly popular workshops, you know, to different places in Japan. I think Hokkaido is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to snow monkeys and all that. And I, I'm guessing the brakes were put on that during the whole COVID adventure, yeah. right? So well, you were I, stuck at home right. writing code. Right. I mean, the, at the end of my third winter tour in 2020, that's when we were locked down, the last, literally the last day. Um, so we got those out, but I haven't done them for the last two years. And that's a big chunk of our revenue out of the window. Um, I've also had to, I haven't been to, I, I do a Namibia tour in summer each year. And I'm going back to Namibia. My first tour is going to be Namibia in about three weeks time. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. But it's um, it's literally the first one in three years, uh, or well, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's been a big chunk of revenue that has been swift, you know, taken out from under our feet. So yeah, I yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that I can do a little bit of something else to because I stopped doing most of my commercial photography. I I just got tired of trying to tell people that 
a photographer is worth more than $10 an hour, yeah. you know? And, right. yeah. and it's just, it's becoming, it's become, it got so much that I, I just thought, you know what? Even the jobs I do, I'm not doing them for the amount that I want to do them for anymore. So I've pretty much stopped doing any commercial work. And, and it was all because my tours were going so well. So, yeah. so I sort of, you know, the tours were going great. They were, in addition to selling prints and eBooks and other digital products, it was all going really well with the tours. And then they went away and it was like, okay, so I'm like 97% down on my yearly revenue. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 97%. You know, yeah. for before we dive in, so for the... For the folks, you know, me, this is a, you know, all my questions are always personal and self-serving, right? Uh, but yeah, I've always been interested in writing, you know, I've had every, like anyone else on the planet, I've had ideas for different apps that would make life easier and all that. Mm. But I've always figured that, that I've never been a coder, right? My, my coding brain stopped at line 10 print frederick semicolon line 20 go to 10 right that was it that's 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 the extent and if i'm really good i'll put a go sub in there and put a subroutine but i've never got never got into coding that's my brother's realm he's like he's like the 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 matrix level coder and i've wow. always been the creative side so i'm curious yeah. like the steps you know it seems like the barriers to entry have fallen since the whole Pascal and Fortran and COBOL days, right? It's, it seems yeah. like it's a little easier these days. Is it? Should I stay away or should it's, I dive in? You know, I would say it's a lot easier now than it ever was. Um, I think that the the coding languages are getting more and more complicated as as more features are added. But yeah. the the editors are becoming so much more intelligent. I if I am writing code in Xcode, which is Apple's coding platform, um. I, it will tell me not only that something is not going to work, but it will make suggestions for what, for what I should use to make mm. it work. And yes. I can like, I can right click a, a variable or a parameter and send it and jump to a completely different part of the program, jump to where it was defined. And if necessary, I can even now these days, I mean, one thing that used to bug me was if I got halfway into a product development um you know, project, and I, I realized that I'd named everything really badly because I, the, it went in a different direction. I would have to go through and search for all and change all of the variables. Now I can just, I can just right click a variable and select refactor, and it will change it throughout the whole product. You know, See, throughout the whole cheating. program. That's cheating, it's, it's man. It's cheating, but back, it's great. Back in the day when, and this is going to reveal the rings around my tree, um, <laughs> but the I learned to type on a Commodore 64. You remember mm, those computers? Me too. I yeah. Learned, yeah, and and my dad bought us a subscription, or yeah, me, bought me a subscription to Compute Magazine, and in, which was basically you know all about computers and whatever the latest thing was out back then. Yeah. And in the usually in the back of that magazine there'd be pages and pages of basic code yeah, that you could yeah. type in, and it would be a little game like a little helicopter that you could land yeah, or yeah. you know some something very rudimentary. But I always wanted that damn game, right? So mm. I'd sit there, and mm. that was my dad's evil trick to teach me how to type, right, and learn a little coding. <laughs> so I'd yeah. sit there for hours typing, trying to be meticulous, get everything perfect, mm. and then the moment of truth would show up. You know, typing "Are you in return?" You know, <laughs> and every then that was just another adventure of syntax error in line one thousand, go yeah. sub without return in line <laughs> blah blah blah. You know, all then you, you spend your forever trying to get it working, and this is all presuming that the original code was correct to begin with, right? Mm, so mm. I would spend then you you know nine times out of ten you get it working. And it's a crappy game, you know, you play it for five <laughs> minutes and it's over. Yeah. But so, it, was, it was the creation of it that was the satisfying part. It so, was. I learned but, a lot and I understood a lot. You know, I, I think that's where I started wrapping my brain around, you know, pixels and poking and mm. peeking and, you mm. know, sprites and all sprites, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember sprites? I mean, yeah. we, we would, if you were probably around 15 or 16 or maybe around there when you got that Commodore, that we, yep. we're probably about the same age. So yeah, yeah I've got the yep. same number of rings. Um, <laughs> Good. But, but I, uh, yeah, I, I was the same. I actually, I went away from it for a while. I, I did I did the Commodore thing, but then I got into the being a teenager in England in the 80s and 
I was out drinking every night and whatever and running, <laughs> you know, chasing, you a, chasing, a, chasing after girls and stuff. So I, um, I, I did all of that for a few years and then I came to Japan. So I had like eight years or so where I was not really into a Commodore or anything that came between there and the basic first, um, I guess they'd be like 386 CPU yep. computers. Yeah. So they came along. Um, I actually, I used to work for a Florida based um, IT company that is that one, the first 10 years I did back in Tokyo uh, from 2010 to 20, uh, sorry, 2000 to 2010. Uh, before I quit that job and became a full-time photographer slash developer slash printer, whatever, yeah. I I um, I was uh, during that time I learned a lot about the product development because I used to I used to run the test team, so I wasn't a developer still, but I would I ran the test team, so we worked very closely with the development team, so that gave me a lot of insight into how a, a development product or you know a product development and um, project was all ran you know, and yeah and yeah. i i was i was actually responsible for for the first simultaneous ship of their um not responsible but i was a key part of their first simultaneous ship of all languages on the same day because yeah. before it used to be you'd do english english would come out and then a year later you'd get Japanese, French, Spanish, and German, and Italian, or whatever, and, Other, and right. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I was, um, I came up with a matrix, and I figured out how we could test it all at the same time with a bit of um, help from the development team. So I'd sort of done, I'd gone in deep and done the project management side as well. Uh, so it all sort of came to this point where yeah. pretty much everything I've done in my life is helping me to be who I am right now. And I'm really grateful way. for that. Yeah, I feel the same way. Well, let, let's uh, this. I keep saying I want to wrap this, but this is riveting. And mm. again, this is this is selfish me talking because I want to dive in and actually start poking around, building a, a couple of apps that I have my my brain around. And I don't know if should I just use my because I'm a marketer at the core. Mm. Should I just write an MRD, a marketing requirements document, and send that to a coder and have them build it? Or should I spend mm. the time learning to build? Um, if I want to go that second route, Martin, where mm. where would you say if somebody wants to they see your app after we're going to show in just a minute here, and they're inspired to do their own app, where should mm. where should they go? Or where should I go to start learning? I think it it depends on what audience you want to target. But mm -hmm. personally, I'm an iPhone user. I I go with iPhone first. I am yeah. going to start to work on an Android version of this after straight pretty much next week ish. Cool. Um, but the if you're going to use uh, if you're going to program for for Apple devices, then the first thing you need to do is is grab Xcode, which is free in the Apple Store, mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend these days, if you can do it, write it in a programming language that's called Swift UI, which mm -hmm. is so basically I can just write three lines of code and have something up on the screen. The hello world is literally like is now three, three or four lines of code. I, I can write text bracket, speech marks, hello world, close bracket, uh, close, you know, close quotes, close bracket, and put that into a body which will build a screen for me and before I know you know a view before I know it I've got hello world on the screen and that literally takes three to four minutes to set up from scratch um then though what you're going to need to do the reason I recommend Swift UI is because you can write everything you don't have to create all of these views all the old style sort of views and nibs and things um but Swift UI is very close to um Probably, I should say Kotlin, which is the um, the Android, one of the main Android. There's Flurry, which works with, it's supposed to be um, portable to both platforms. If you can write in Flurry, you can, you can create something that you could compile and put on both the Android store and the App Store, the Apple App Store. But it's got limitations. The, the general idea is right for both. Um, and if you're going to do that, Swift UI is great for iOS. For Android, uh, Kotlin is probably the way to go. And okay. they they are very similar languages. So I'm not expecting that Photoclock Pro is going to be as big a job for me to port to uh, Android as it was to code from the scratch. From scratch. It, it took me, including this latest 
version 1.2 update um, where I've added integration with Apple Music. Including that, it's taken me about four months, and that's four months of maybe 1,200 hours a, a month coding. Um, so I, it's taken me about 5,000 hours to get to the point where I am. I'm hoping yeah. it's going to take me less than 2,000 to create an Android version, but they're the, they're the programs and the coding languages that I would use. You know, so I'm, I'm weighing, you know, there's only so many, so many hours in a day and, mm. you know, so many hours left on our clock, right? <laughs> so, right. You know, to use the metaphor. Uh, but one of the things that I'm looking at learning from a creative standpoint is that I'm really excited about is Unreal Engine 5. And mm playing with the, with that world creation side of it. So my mm. brain is like constantly wanting to learn all these things as mm. it, you know, sort of gets older and atrophies. So it's a race, <laughs> it's a race to the end <laughs> of, of yeah. being able to absorb and put this data into use. So let's, let's dive into the demo here, Martin, for the folks that are listening to this audio, to the audio version of this podcast, this is, you know, for all intents and purposes, the end of this episode. Um, I'm gonna let Martin tell, tell us a little bit about the app and then we're gonna record a, the second segment of this, which will live on YouTube, both on the same page on This Week in Photo, but this will be the walkthrough, the visual walkthrough of the application where Martin will take us through all the the, the bits and, and baubles that he put together to make this thing. So Martin, for the, for the folks that are watching this, or mm. that are, I'm sorry, the folks that are listening to this without the benefit of video, just give us a quick end to the episode about what Photo Clock Pro is and why they should watch the next video that's gonna mm. be on the screen. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so, Photo Clock Pro is, it basically turns your iPhone or iPad into an analog clock, but it, you, it has albums that you can, you can actually buy up to 10 at the moment, photo packs of my own. But because this is TWIP and the ph photographer's audience, I'm assuming that you want to show your own photos. And so you go to the top album and you can load photos into there directly from your photos app on your on your mac or your well obviously uh, sync to your uh, iphone or ipad in there you can also slide it across and create additional albums edit the names so you could have one for portraits weddings things like that if you're a working photographer you could have one that's full of wedding photographer wedding photos you know, on an ipad on your desk while you're talking to someone and they get to see not only the clock, which is it's amazingly configurable, but your photos going by, going by in the background with a really nice um, slideshow effect. And you can now, if you want to, if you're using it for relaxing purposes, it integrates with Apple Music so you can play your favorite music right there in the app. Um, cool. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool app. You can get it from the app store at mvp.ac slash as. PCP for App Store Photo Clock Pro. Okay, and we'll put a link to that in the, the description for this video and in the blog post show notes on the website. And folks, I would encourage you, you know, Martin Martin is very humble. He's done more for podcasters around the world. <laughs> There's probably countless podcasts that this guy has inspired. So I would encourage you, if nothing else, just go there, grab the app. You know, it's only a couple bucks, right, Martin? Right, so it's like grab bucks. the app. Yeah, support this guy and as a thank you for all the countless hours of podcasting that he's done <laughs> and the other countless of hours of podcasting that I've done and everybody else that he's influenced. So uh, definitely go definitely go check it out. Thank all right, you so everybody. you're welcome. You're welcome. So we'll leave this episode right here. Uh, again, those those links will be in the show notes for this episode on the on the podcast or on thisweekinphoto.com and also in uh, the description on YouTube. Martin Bailey, thank you for coming thank on. I you. appreciate you. Thank you very much, Fred. This is Twitter.